there's a revolution in sailing. It's called 69F, so I visited the 69F regatta in Miami to understand more about this revolution. The revolution is foiling. Team foiling is no longer a sport for elite sailors. Any sailor can enjoy foiling with the 69F class. Instead of riding the waves, you're flying. The boats in this brave new world still harness only the power of the wind, but balanced on finely tuned hydraulic wings, they're reaching speeds previously thought impossible. There is a revolution happening right now in sailing, and it's foiling. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the race crews and then take you out on the course. I'm covering the race from all angles. I have cameras in the boats. Of course, we have some chase boats and in the air to get you the best angles of the race. And after the race, I get in a boat to let you experience foiling. This is the Bacardi Cup in Miami. Uh, this is here at Dinner Key Marina. This is Regatta Park. So they've got six boats today. Um, all these guys are either Olympic champions or junior champions. Uh, you know, there's an American Magic team here. So all these guys are like premier racers. They know what they're doing. And so it's really exciting to be here and see this because just the excitement and the energy and all this stuff of the foiling stuff is pretty cool. And I'm going to show you guys what this is all about. It's pretty rad. All these boats are pretty much exactly the same. So it's up to the individual racers here to make the difference, which is kind of cool. I like that. For sailing enthusiasts, I mean, they all know that racing and all that, even in, even on just like a little 35-foot cruising boat, they can be kind of intense and a lot of fun and very uh, exhilarating. But for your average viewer, I think maybe they kind of view sailing as kind of an old man sport. And, you know, even with the current monohulls that are out today, like the uh, TP-52s, those things are pretty amazing um, and they go really fast, but this is just a whole nother level and I think it brings some real excitement to the sport of sailing and hopefully uh, more viewers and get more people involved because it's really cool. These things are amazing. We were counting down to the race start as the crews readied their boats. Being made of high-tech and lightweight materials, it's pretty easy to move the boats to the water with just a few crew. I'm CJ Perez, I'm from Hawaii, and I'm the driver for the American Magic Team. I've been doing the circuit with SailGP, and now I'm here with the American Magic Team, uh, here with the women this week, so hopefully we'll be able to make a really good team for the AC40 to compete in Barcelona. When is, uh, when, when, when is the AC40 for, for the women's division launching? Um, it depends with each team, so we should be getting we actually have our first AC40 that's down in Pensacola already, and we'll be getting another one sometime soon. I don't know for sure yet. All right. Well, hey, uh, I'll let you get, looks like you're putting in, but uh, nice to meet you. Good luck out there. Thank you and so much. Uh, we'll fly the drone and catch you guys doing some stuff. Yeah, great. I'll see you. Cool. Now I'm with Sarah. How you doing? Hi. Good to meet you. And she is with, uh, you might have heard of them, American Magic. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. How'd you get into that? Uh, they were looking to put together a team for the Women's America's Cup, and so... And there you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, now, you also race, race these here, and so, I mean, what, what's your position on the crew on one of these? Uh, so on the 69F side, I'm the main trimmer, um, so I'm in the middle of the three of us on the boat. So, on the, so doing the American Magic stuff and this, I mean, you're doing some incredible speeds out there. I mean, was it a little scary at first getting it going that fast? Um, I don't think so. Oh, I think really? speed is, you adjust to speed. The scarier things are when people don't know how to respond to speed. Mm. The speed itself isn't yeah. scary. Yeah, but it's it's amazing just seeing you guys rip around there. So that's yeah. pretty cool. So how long have you been with American Magic now? Um, we're still in the process of putting a team together. So okay. it's still early days. So are you speed. doing, you're going to be racing the, uh, the America's Cup style boats as well? or Hopefully. Oh, Hopefully really? the AC40s, wow. yeah. The AC40, that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, yeah. well congratulations yeah, on that. That's you. really cool. So, all right, we'll look out for Sarah racing the AC40 soon. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so I've had the, I've already talked to the rest of your team, so you are Pearl, and uh, tell me what's going on. What are you doing here? Yeah, so we are at the event this week. There's seven teams, um, three American Magic teams, all women, so okay. it's pretty exciting. Um, and it's kind of like uh, the tryouts type thing to be on the team? Yeah, so we are going through tryouts since August of last year. Wow. Um, once one event per month, pretty much, all held on the 69F. That's been our 
right? training platform. Because eventually you're going to upgrade to the AC40s, right? Correct. I mean, these are still pretty nice. So it's not, yes. I mean, yeah, but so they, where, where are you from? What's your sailing background? Um, I'm from Hawaii as well as okay. CJ. Okay. Um, we grew up sailing, sailing at the same club and we went through the whole open Vic to 29R to WASP program together. Yeah. Um, and then I moved out to Newport for college and just got into this exposure to this kind of sailing, which is awesome. Yeah, Love well, yeah. I mean, I think, it, you know, I was talking to several people, I mean, like, just this kind of action in sailing is, I think, something that, that it needs, and on the smaller boats, too, which is pretty cool. So. Yeah, yeah, it's super fun. Well, you did a great job out there today. Nice Thank to you meet so you. much. Thanks nice for taking to meet time. you, too. All right. Let me introduce you to a team that was going to take me sailing after the race. They are only 14. I'm Nathan Pine, and I'm from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, and I do the flight control. Hi, I'm Pierce Olson. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida, and I do the flight control as well. I'm Logan Moraz. I'm from New York City, and I do the main trim. My name is Finn Olson. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I do the skip ring on board. So I'm here with the guys from Team Happy. Say hello, guys. Uh, How did you all get together to uh, come racing on the F uh, 69Fs? Um, for us, like we all were teammates beforehand in the Optimus, and we were really close, and we decided it'd be a great opportunity to try out the 69F. So we all got together, and we're very fortunate and lucky to be able to compete in this event at a very high level. So I was talking to Alex, and you saying you guys are already uh, doing pretty well. How long have you been together together racing this boat? Well, this is our first time as a as a team. Before we've been sailing F69, but with different pairings, but. As a team, it's our, our third day racing together. Yeah. And so, wow, only three days racing together. Yeah. He says you guys are already doing pretty good, so that's awesome. So what's uh, what's the future plans for this? I mean, you doing some like Olympic events or competitions or what? Uh, I think to get better at foiling is definitely super important and imperative in this boat as, the, as sailing goes to more foiling. And then um, it's also just a great way to learn against really good sailors and yeah. So do you think, uh, you know, with the foiling kind of revolution that's happened, is that making the sailing uh, competitions and all that more interesting? Because you're going faster, there's more like, well, there's more danger, there's more, uh, you know, there's more uh, energy and all that? Well, I think at least for this boat, it's, there's a lot more variables given that you're foiling and a lot more controls you could do. So it definitely makes you a more of a well-round sailor to be able to adjust so many controls and be aware and on top of everything. Cool. So yeah, I think it helps a lot. And everything goes a lot faster, like you have to be on time and on point with everything. Cool. Well guys, good luck out there today. I'm sure you're doing well. And uh, I've been looking forward to watching. I'm going to be flying the drone out there catching some shots with you guys today. So. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So I am with Casper. How you doing, man? Nice to meet you. And you're with AC40 Canada? Correct, yes. Right. So tell me, what is this boat? What can it do? And like, cause it, I mean, it's scary fast. <laughs> like I was looking at it, I was like, I don't even know if I'd want to go sailing on that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so this is a 69F. It's a 6.9 meter foiling boat. It's super fun, honestly, especially in wind like today. We get to max speed is around 27 to 30 knots. Reaching can be a little bit faster. It's honestly super fun, super physical and super technical, especially in the maneuvers. We have 15 minute races, so everything is super jammed up and super packed. That makes it super exciting to fight against boats and have lots of maneuvers and just go bam, bam, bam. You can't just go out and, I mean, somebody's got to show you the ropes on this, I mean, literally. And then like, uh, you know, how long does it get where you're proficient and can, you know, competent to sail this thing? Yeah. So I definitely took, I think a little bit too long. I took about a year to figure out where I am now. Um, but with a good team, I say, about a month, two month of solid training. Not consistent, but 10 day blocks obviously. Gets really, really good. So how many crew positions do you have on this? So there are three positions uh, with four, it can be sailed with four though. The first one, the flight controller, they do the boards, they do the kite when we have it up. Mm -hmm. That can be split into two sometimes and that's how we're running it right now. Then we have the main sheet, which is what I am. It's controlling the mainsail, the heel of the boat, and basically all of the speed. And then we have the skipper, which is kind of simple, but it's more mental. It's just moving around and finding the pressures and fighting all the other boats. Yes, thanks, man. Nice Appreciate to meet it. you. Yeah, great talking. It was time to launch the boats in the water. Being a lot of carbon fiber, the boats are very light and sit on a trailer that three people can load in the water easily. I headed out in one of the support boats to catch the action. 
name is Paris Hankin and I'm the skipper. Helena Scott, main trimmer. Cam Farah, flight controller. Well, how have, you, how have you enjoyed your sales so far? How have the races out here so far? I mean, it's been fun. Today is what day? Four. four. <laughs> Today is day four or five. How does it feel uh, trying out for American Magic? That's got to be pretty uh, thrilling, huh? Yeah, it's good. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity and it's going to be what we make of it. So, yeah, we're trying to bring our best effort every day and really make the most of the learnings and take what we can from this boat, but then mostly also focus on communication and teamwork and building the squad. How do you feel like uh, you've done so far uh, this, this, uh, the five days here racing? Y'all y'all doing, doing well, improving, or uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, the boat's pretty tweaky. It has a pretty steep learning curve. So it's been nice to watch the team come up the learning curve so quickly over the last few days. Today will be a good day to kind of put it all into action. All right, guys, good luck today, and uh, have a good race. Thank you so much. Sure. Alright guys, so uh, Sarah, CJ, and Pearl, you guys are in third place after uh, a few days there. How does it feel? Pretty good. We've got a few more days to go, so it's not over yet. Yeah. But any, uh, any plans for today? Anything to change along the, along the way or just keep going? Keep going, keep it simple, and try to get around the course with the fewest mistakes. Right. You think, uh, what's wind condition out there? Are you going to be reusing the kite or are you... Uh... Uh, we'll see what course we get, what shape of course, um, and that'll help us make a decision. Yesterday, uh, we d it was too windy to need the kite, so we'll see how we go today. I personally like the L course with a reaching start, downwind to a gate, back upwind and a reaching finish. Um, but it, as it gets windier, windward lured. Go America! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good luck to you guys uh, and uh, American Magic, and you guys are doing awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. The boats can sail on their own out to the racing area, but it's often easier and faster just to tow them with the support boats. Once out by the start line, the crews ready their boats to race. While the sailors ready their boats, the support crew set up the course. Once all the boats have their sails up and are ready, they're allowed to do some practice sailing to get ready. Three minutes before the race is due to start, there's a warning sounded and the boats begin to line up for the start. The first course is an out and back, but this class there's required to have two tacks and two jibes on each section of the course. The crews maneuver their boats to be crossing the start line at full speed just after the start horn. Most of the teams had a really good start, only American Magic 1 was a little bit out of position. Flying Nika 1 and 2 are both professional race crews, while the rest of the boats are amateurs. Although amateurs may not be the proper term, most of these guys are Olympians or elites in their field. Nika 2 was off to a great start, followed closely by American Magic 2 and 3, with Nika 1 just behind. Nika 1 got a little high on their foil and crashed their bow down in the water, which really slowed them down. When foiling, it's crucial to keep the hull from touching the water as that's what really slows you. The rudder has a foil which helps control the pitch of the bow, and the crews use their body weight to help with lateral stability. Nika 2 was really beginning to pull away, but none of the boats had made their first tack. Nika 2 makes their first tack. You can see as they come through, they crash down to the water and really slows them down. They were able to get back up on foil relatively quickly, only ceding a little bit of ground to Nika 1. Flying Nika 2 hits the water a little hard there, that slows him down. And Nika 1 takes full advantage, coming up on him. Nika 1 was doing a really good job of keeping the boat on even plane and foiling quickly.
Both boats are staying very close together, but they each have one more tack to make before they can go around the mark. Nika 2 makes their turn, slowing down a little bit before getting back up on plane. American Magic 2 is not that far behind, but they need to make one more tack as well. Nika 2 put a little bit more distance into Nika 1. On the top right of your screen is the first mark and Nika 2 has a nice lead. Rounding the mark and turning downwind, Nika 2 really slows down. Just off the left hand side of your screen, Nika 1 makes a great turn around the mark, staying on foil the whole way and putting the speed on. Nika 1 takes over the lead. These guys are absolutely flying at more than 20 knots. They make their first jibe, keeping the speed up, keeping on foil. Wow, that's really nice. Staying on foil during that turn was really impressive. Nika 1 is putting on a clinic. So far after the first three days of racing, they are undefeated. Their second jive is not quite as good as their first one and they do slow down a little bit there. Nika 1 crosses the finish in first place. I think it was mostly due to that great turn at the mark and their first jibe headed back. Nika 2 finishes second, not too far behind them. And American Magic 2 in third. Happy doing over 20 knots. They still have one more jive to make. And Happy crosses the line in fourth place. Behind them, American Magic 1 in fifth. American Magic 3 went over on one of their jives and is a little bit behind everyone else. but they got the boat righted and were able to finish. Okay, I am with uh, Lorenzo De Felicia. He's with the Flying Nika sailing team out here on the 69F. And tell me, you've also got a foiling 60-foot boat. Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah, we have a full foiling boat. It's uh, an offshore race. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty interesting boat. Uh, looks like the American Cup boat, but uh, with, uh, with the keel. And, uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting program. And uh, these years uh, we're going to raise uh, four races and uh, a lot of training is going on. And uh, yeah, during the winter, we are uh, making some development on the boat, on the sails. And uh, yeah, we came here in Miami for keep pushing, keep training on the 69F that uh, is still falling boat. And uh, you know, we are uh, very happy to keep training and uh, stay here as a team and uh, enjoy the, this amazing week on the Bacardi Sailing Week in Miami. We have uh, two skippers, two, then we have a uh, main trimmer, jeep trimmer, the navigator and the foil controller. And what, what is your position on the boat? On the boat I'm doing the jeep trimmer on the straight line and the uh, main trimmer on the maneuver. And what kind of, I mean, Difference wise, I mean these are pretty great boats here, but like between the 60 six point nine and the and the sixty, what kind of like speeds are you doing on that? Well obviously the sixty the, the fly Nika is a little bit more faster and uh, especially with the uh, windy condition. We, we were uh, top speed last year were uh, thirty seven knots. Wow. And uh, yeah, but we are uh, doing something uh, we development a lot of the boat this year and we expect to increase a lot of the boat and the consistent of the on the speed of the boat the 69 uh, my top speed was uh, 34 knots oh, wow. 
so yeah. That's pretty fast. Pretty fast, but yeah, it was on the Garda Lake, what crazy day with the, you know, with the Peler, perfect condition, flat to water, and it was, uh, yeah. Amazing. So where, uh, where is your next race on the 60 footer, and how can people uh, find more information about your team and the boat? Uh, yeah, uh, um, in two weeks we started the training back in Puntala. Uh, we have uh, our uh, Flying uh, uh, account on Instagram, but uh, yeah, information is difficult to find, you know. But uh, you can uh, have a look uh, about us for the race and uh, training, uh, some picture and uh, some video. All right. Well, hey, thanks for uh, talking to us today. Good, good luck out there. Nice Thank race. Thank you guys. Thank right. you. Take Thank care. You. The second race of the day is the same course. It's a clean start with just American Magic back from the rest of the group. Flying Nika 2 takes an early tack and separates from the rest of the group. American Magic 2 turns and joins them on the tack. American Magic 1 and 3 are doing nice leading the group. Followed by Team Happy and Flying Nika 1. And there goes Flying Nika 1, tacking to starboard. On board Happy, you can see the crew using their body weight to keep the boat level. American Magic 1 leading the way. American Magic 1 makes their tack. The boys on Happy make their tack as well. Nice job staying pretty fast in the turn. American Magic 3 has not tacked yet. All the boats are pretty spread out along the course, so it's hard to know who's actually leading the race. On the east side of the course, American Magic 1 and 2 were still pretty close to each other on their tacks. Way upwind and actually having already made their second tax, Flying Nika 1 and 2 were neck and neck headed towards the mark. It looks like American Magic 2 is the closest to them might turn in a little bit behind. The two Flying Nika boats are very close to each other coming to the gate. American Magic 2 is not too far behind them. Flying Nika 2 takes attack, probably to get a better angle at the gate when they head downwind. And Nika 1 follows suit. Almost halfway through the race, it's very competitive. All the boats are fairly close together. Nika 1 is in the best position though, they are further upwind and closer to the gate than the other boats. Nika 2 tacks back towards the gate. Nika 1 is tacked as well and is almost to the gate. That yellow pin just to the right is the mark. Nika 1 took a great angle towards that gate and was able to keep it up on foil as they turned downwind, steaming right along. Nika 2 is able to do the same, staying on foil headed downwind. 
American Magic 2 is coming at a pretty acute angle to the mark. They may not be able to stay up on foil as they round it. But they do an incredible job staying on foil, keeping their speed up as they round the mark. Nice job. Happy got a little too high and then crashed down on their hull, losing all their speed, losing ground to American Magic 3. Back on foil, the guys round the mark. American Magic 2 really made up some ground on Nika 1 and 2 around that last mark. I think that might be because they did not set their spinnaker, they just stayed on their sails while Nika 1 and 2 took the time to set their spinnakers. American Magic 2 is gambling that the wind will stay strong and they won't need the spinnaker, but if it stays a little bit lighter, Nika 1 and 2 will definitely pull away with their spinnakers. It's hard to say who's in the lead here as American Magic 2 takes their first jibe. I think it's going to be Nika 1 though. It is Nika 1 way down the line crossing the finish. Nika 2 flying in towards the finish. It looks like they'll take second place as American Magic 2 will have to jive back to make it to the finish. American Magic 2 jives back and heads for home. The boys from Happy looking very fast. They're going to take fourth place. It's American Magic 3 in 5th place. And flying the spinnaker, it's American Magic 1 in 6th. And let's have a word with the race director. Here we are, uh, day three of the Bacardi Cup. Uh, today is a beautiful day with uh, 10 to 16 knots of breeze. Uh, currently, flying Nika is winning, um, leading the fleet. Everyone is uh, getting better every race, and it's really cool to see. Uh, we're about to start uh, fourth race of the day, windward leeward, and after that, we will go to a reaching start. Uh, so yeah, great action and a great sailing day here in the Bay of Miami. I'm giving you a different look at this race since I don't have enough battery to film it all from the air. We're going to film this one from the water. All the boats line up at the start line and start accelerating just as the race begins. Happy gets a little close to American Magic 3 and they call for a foul. We'll see what happens. American Magic 1 gets a little bow high in their turn and costs them a little bit of speed. Team Happy looking good, using some body weight to keep it stable. And here comes their tack. Team Canada's looking really fast. And so is American Magic 3. Nika 2 is looking really good, actually leading the race as they close in on the first mark. And they make a beautiful turn, keeping their speed up and keeping it on foil. And American Magic 3 headed into the mark second. But close behind them, Nika 1 and the boys from Happy. Oh. 
Nika 1 crashes down off the foil. They have some work to do if they want to catch up with Nika 2 to keep their streak of winning alive. Happy turning around the mark, doing a good job of keeping their speed up. After turning downwind, Nika 1 and American Magic 3 are both setting their spinnakers. Happy decides to uh, skip the spinnaker and just speed on right by, and we'll see if that pays off. If there's enough wind, it will. If not, the spinnakers will definitely help out the other boats. Behind them, coming up to the mark, is American Magic 1. American Magic 3 has their spinnaker set, headed downwind. Crash down off foil and it really slows them down. In the distance is Nika 1. It looks like they may be making their second jive. That means they can head straight for the finish line. Nice jive by American Magic 3. Oh, they gotta jive and jive again before they cross, huh? That was actually Nika 1 crossing the finish line, and American Magic right there should be crossing the finish line in second place. It's a great showing from boys at Happy coming in third. Well done, guys. Right on their heels is Nika 2. Followed closely with a great performance is American Magic 1. Team Canada looking fast with their spinnaker up as they cross the line. There's your race winners, Nika 1. After the race, American Magic 1 got a little off balance and tipped the boat over. They had a good race though. To right the boats, the crew stand on the dagger boards holding onto the foils and use their body weight to pull it back up. So we hope to compete in the next America's Cup. <laughs> It takes a while for all the water to leave the sail and the boat to right itself. <laughs> the last race of the day is an L-shaped course starting off on a reach, turning downwind before heading back up and reaching home. Just a minute before the race starts, the boats start lining up. I think the wind shifts a little bit and knocks Happy over. That's poor timing for that. But the same thing actually happens to Nika too, and they go over as well. That's a tough break about 30 seconds before the race starts. American Magic 3 has an excellent start and takes an early lead. Team Canada looking good as well, followed by American Magic 2 and Flying Nika 1. Unfortunately, it's a pretty slow process riding the boat. It's going to hurt Happy. American Magic 3 bearing away a little bit. They might be having an issue, but Team Canada and American Magic 2 well out to a good lead. It took a little time for Flying Nika to set their kite, but that'll probably pay off for them in the long run. Just look at the wake Flying Nika 1 is putting out. They are absolutely screaming. They easily must be doing 25 knots. American Magic 2 turns downwind.
Nika one jibes as well. I think the other teams need to get their kites out or Nika's gonna blow right by him. Because of the distances between them, it's a little bit difficult to see who's actually in the lead. Flying Nika 1 pulls down their kite in preparation for rounding the mark, but they still need to make one more jive before they can cross the gate. There's the gate. Uh, they make their jibe right before it. That still counts. And they're headed through the gate right there. Nice maneuver. It is pretty slow going from a downwind back up to attack. And they made it look good. Nika 2 has really made up some ground. They're looking to come in second around that gate. It's going to be close with Team Canada, though. Team Canada does have the right away, and yep, Nika 2 has to bear away. Both Team Canada and American Magic 3 have to make one more jive each. That's really going to slow them down. Especially American Magic 3, they might be out of position a little bit there. All three of these boats are down off their foils, moving slows, losing a lot of ground to Nika 1. That does give a little opportunity though. American Magic 2 is catching up. Indeed, American Magic 2 comes in through the pack, keeps their speed up, rounds the gate, and is turning up win, looking pretty good already on foil. Now they're only just a little bit behind Team Canada. Nika 1 is up front by a big margin. There's no way anyone's going to catch him. The last mark is on the top right of your screen, and Flying Nika's headed straight for it. A good line right at it. It may look like Nika 2 is pretty close, but they basically have to sail all the way to Nika 1's current line before they can turn back up. Clearing the last mark and headed for home, Nika won. No one's going to catch them. They are perfect on the day. First place in all the races. In fact, for the whole regatta, they were 21 out of 21 over all the days.
You have three boats all rounding the mark about the same time headed home. Let's see who they are. It's Flying Nika 2 followed closely by American Magic 2 and American Magic 3. And that's going to be second place for Flying Nika 2. It's a very tight race for third. It looks like American Magic 3 is making up some ground on American Magic 2, but I don't think there's enough space left. It looks like American Magic 2 is going to take it. So here are the results for the race day and the regatta. Coming in third place, American Magic 2. In second place, the guys from Flying Nika 2. And it's no surprise they were perfect on the day and perfect for the regatta. Flying Nika 1, well done guys. And here are the rest of the results. In fourth place, American Magic 1, followed by Team Canada, American Magic 3, and Team Happy. with Alex. He is the CEO of 69F uh, America. So, yes, sir. Hey, thanks for having me out. No, no, it's, uh, I mean, you said it was going to wow me and yeah, definitely it has. So uh, tell us what are you trying to do with these? What, what, what's, what's your whole purpose of 69F? What are you doing? Well, we, we're part of the foiling revolution that is happening on, happening on the sailing world. Okay? Foiling is very popular in, the, in Europe, but it's underdeveloped in America. So we, are, we have the only foiling monohull in the market other than the America's Cup. And we make it affordable for uh, every kid to uh, to learn to foil. Well, these kids, it was pretty cool having them. Uh, you know, I'm sure we got some good footage of it today. I'm looking forward to checking that out and editing it. But so, how can people get more information about it and figure out where? Uh... Six, 69F Sailing. Okay. Is the is the website and the Instagram 69F America. Okay. All right, man. Well, thanks for having us yeah. out. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So with the regatta over, there was only one more thing to do. I needed to experience foiling for myself. The guys from Happy took me out flying. I've never done anything like it, and I want to go back. I think we need a Sailing Doodles 69F team. All right, well, there you have it from uh, Miami, the uh, 69F uh, regatta here. It's actually part of the Bacardi Cup. Pretty cool boats. I think this really probably is the future of sailboat racing. Really nice. I had a blast. I mean, being up on a foil doing that, I was like, I was a little apprehensive at first going out there, but I tell you what, it was a really awesome, thrilling uh, experience, and I want to get out there and do it some more. So that was really cool. I'm so glad I got to experience that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Think it's the new uh, next thing in racing? I, I do. I think that's going to be one of the coolest events coming. Thank you to Alex for uh, with 69F for letting me go ride along and making this happen here. And So if you're interested in these boats, uh, you can check out 69F America on Instagram or uh, 69FSailing.com. Uh, also, uh, Performance Yacht Sales, that is Alex's company there. Uh, we're actually about to jump on a trimaran with his company there and go sailing around the Bahamas. So click that like and subscribe button if you want to watch us sail around on a pretty nice little performance tri trimaran through the Bahamas. It's really cool stuff. There's links down in the description for all this. Check it out. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next video.